I've got three investments that will make you rich this year. In fact, I made over 4,000% return on one just two years ago, and I use the other two regularly to double my money. We're talking how to get rich in 2019 today on Let's Talk Money. Beat that. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the community. Thank you for taking a part of your time to be here today. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now today is going to be a fun video. We talk a lot about investing and building wealth here on the channel, but it's all that slow and steady approach. Even that how to become a millionaire video last week was about building a business over time and, and really the habits you need to develop to be successful. This week is going to be different though. In this video, I'm going to reveal three investments you can make that could potentially make you rich in 2019. Jackpot investments that if they pay off will make you rich in less than a year. What we aren't going to talk about though are those traditional investments like stocks. Like I said, those will make you wealthy, but it's not going to happen overnight. At even a solid 10% annual return on $500 a month invested, it's still going to take you 31 years to reach that $1 million. I'm going to take what I learned working for venture capital firms and as a private wealth manager to show you the ways to get rich fast. Then I'll reveal three secrets that are going to help you get there no matter which strategy you choose. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video for those three tips. We're going to get started on these three jackpot investments to make you rich, but I'd love to hear your ideas. What's your best get rich investment idea and, and how does it work? So scroll down and tell us in the comments below the video. So our first few ways to get rich are going to be in some leveraged investments. Now this means investing in something that takes your money farther than just what you put in. Some of these investments will pay 50 to 1 on your money and pay off within a month or two. That means you can potentially start with $1,000, roll it over a few times and easily be into the six figures by the end of the year. The first one here probably has the most potential and that's trading futures contracts. Now futures are just financial contracts to buy or sell something at a set date and a set price usually in the next month or a few months from now. Most futures contracts are actually bought or sold as a way to reduce risk. For example, a farmer might sell October contracts for wheat and this contract sets a price they'll get months in advance so they don't have to worry about the price in the meantime. On the other side of the story, a food processor like General Mills might buy those contracts so it locks in its price for that wheat uh, that it needs to make your breakfast of champions. Futures can also be used for investment though. You can buy those contracts for wheat if you expect the price to go up and then sell them before that delivery date. Uh, but here's the beauty of futures contracts. You can buy contracts worth hundreds of thousands of dollars for just a few thousand. For example, each single contract of West Texas Intermediate or U.S. Crude is for, is for 1,000 barrels. Now at the current price of around $70 a barrel, that would mean 70 grand per contract to buy or sell depending on what the futures price was. But you're only required to put down about $3,500 for each contract, so you can bet on the price of about 3,000 barrels of oil for about 10 grand. That's about a 20 to 1 times your money. So let's do the math here and this is an actual trade I made in 2016 after the price of crude had bottomed in February at around $26 a barrel. By March it was clear that prices had just gone too far and were on the rebound. So I bought two contracts for $38 a barrel for May delivery. The current or spot price on this point at this point was just under $36. So the market was expecting the price to go up a little but not too much. I put down $7,000 for the three contracts worth $114,000, but this was actually more than I needed to deposit. I could have put down as little as $5,700 for that investment. Crude prices kept climbing and by May had reached $45 a barrel when I sold my contracts. Remember that each contract is worth 1,000 barrels of crude, so those three contracts were now worth $135,000 or a gain of $21,000 from that original price and I had made three times my investment in just two months. Now that's potentially a 4,000% annualized return or 40 times your money, but like a lot of these jackpot investments we'll talk about today, there's huge risk involved. Uh, if the price had gone the other way, I could have easily lost my entire investment in a heartbeat. In fact, I remember one trade in 2012. I was trading gasoline futures and there was an explosion at a Canadian refinery overnight. The price of gasoline spiked like 4% overnight and since I had shorted the contract betting the price would go down, then I lost over $10,000 on the investment. Now there are five types of assets that trade with futures contracts. You can buy or sell energies like oil, gasoline, heating oil, natural gas and ethanol. There are contracts for currencies with the dollar, euro, British pound, yen and the Mexican peso all heavily traded. Uh, you can also buy or sell contracts on the direction of the stock market. There's also contracts on metals including gold, silver, aluminum and copper. 
And finally, almost any agricultural commodity will have a contract. So corn, wheat, soybeans, rice, coffee, cattle's hogs, and even orange juice. Most online investing platforms will allow you to open a futures account with a broker. Uh, there's a lot that goes into futures trading, determining where you think the price is going to go and setting up your investments. I'll do a video exclusively on futures because it can be a really amazing investment. A few tips here though. First, always understand the downsides and, and the catalyst for the trade to go the wrong way. You also need to set stop orders so if the price goes against you, you don't lose too much money. It's also a good idea to trade in a few different types of assets so that if one trade is losing money, then maybe the others are going to support your profits. Our next jackpot investment to get rich is through options trading. Now, Options are contracts to buy or sell stocks, but with a very important difference from those futures contracts. Now, Buying an option gives you the right to buy or sell a stock, but not the obligation. So there are two types of options. A call option gives you the right to buy shares, while a put option gives you the right to sell shares. When you buy or sell an option, you'll see an expiration date, which is always the third Friday of the month. You'll also see a strike price, which is the price of the shares for that option. And you'll see a price of the option called the premium. So let's look at an example to make it easier. We see here that the shares of Apple in mid-November are currently trading at just under $204 a share. Now I'm looking at the January 2019 option, so this investment will expire on January 18th in a few months. I can buy call options at $200 a share, which means I get the right to buy Apple stock at $200 a share in January. That's going to be the strike price. Now for the right to do this, I have to pay $12 a share. That's called the premium on the option. So if I pay $12 for the right to buy Apple at $200 a share in January, and that price of those shares goes to $240 by that time, what does it mean for me? Uh, the option would now be worth at least $40 because if it was less than $40, someone could just buy the option and then sell the shares immediately for a riskless profit. So instead of buying the shares, I could just sell that call option for $40 and a return of 233% on my money. Each option contract is for 100 shares, so that one contract would have cost me about $1,200 and I could sell it for $4,000 or a profit of $2,800 on each contract I bought. And remember, options come in two types, calls and puts. So if I thought Apple shares might fall, then I would buy that put option that would give me the right to sell shares at a certain price. Going back to our example, I could get the right to sell shares at $200 for $7.59 per share. If the price goes down to under $192.41 by January, so that's that $200 strike price minus the price that I paid for the right to sell those shares, then I would make money. Now, Options can also be used for protection and this is primarily how I use them. So if I own shares of a company and I'm worried about the price going down over the next few months, I can buy a put option for the right to sell those shares at a certain price. I've effectively locked in that price as the lowest that I'll get on the stock even if the market price falls further. An important point to remember here is that buying an option gives you the right but not the obligation to buy or sell a stock. So if I bought those call options on Apple at $200 a share and the price isn't above $200 in January, I sure as hell am not going to buy them for $200 each through that contract. I would just let the option expire uh, but I would lose that $12 a share I invested but would be able to buy Apple for less than $200 in the, in the market. Similarly, if I bought put options against a stock I own and the price of the shares didn't fall, I would just hold on to that stock. Uh, the price I paid for the put options would be gone, but they did their job, protecting me from any short-term weakness. Now, the payoff on that Apple options wasn't huge because the strike price was very close to that actual price, uh, so we weren't betting on any big move in the shares. Now, let's look at an, an another example to see how options can make you rich. So here we have January options for shares of McDonald's. Now I've picked McDonald's because it's a stock that doesn't normally see big changes in the share price. That's important for options trading because it's built into the price you pay for each contract. If shares tend to jump around a lot, it's going to cost more for that right to buy or sell the shares because there's a higher chance the shares are going to be much higher or lower by expiration. But say we're expecting shares of McDonald's to absolutely tank by January from trading at about 182 a share right now. Uh, maybe we have a lawyer connection that says Ronald McDonald's being sued for alimony. Or maybe John Amos has just opened a McDowell's down the street from every restaurant. Either way, the Happy Meal isn't so happy. So we can buy a put option to sell the shares for $145 each and we'll pay just $0.36 cents or, or $36 for each contract since an options contract is worth 100 shares each. Now if shares of McDonald's plunge 35% by January to $118, then our put option is worth at least $27 each because we have the right to sell those shares for $145. That $36 we put down for each option contract is now worth $2,700. That's a 7,400% return. 
to trade options, you only have to be approved in your online investing account. Now that usually requires a minimum of a few thousand dollars in the account, but that's about it. Like I said, I generally just use options to protect my investments or to make a little more money from them, but you can make a lot of money very fast. There are some different option strategies you can use, but the idea is that you have a strong reason to believe the price is gonna go up or down very quickly. You have millions of other investors looking at each stock and all their expectations for that stock price are built into the options pricing. That average market expectation has to be wrong for some reason. Now, in our example above, finding out from your lawyer friend about Ronald's legal troubles would be insider trading and you'd go to jail. But there are a lot of other ways to find out why you think a stock should be much higher or lower. Here too, I would suggest having options bets in several stocks to diversify your risks. A stop loss orders can also work here to limit your losses and don't feel like you have to make an options bet on every stock you think the, op the price should be higher or lower. Be selective where you place your money. Our next jackpot investment is the darling of 2017 but hasn't done much this year, Bitcoin. Now subscribers of the channel are going to remember a video I did late last year warning investors about Bitcoin and suggesting Bitcoin related stocks to pick instead. Those stocks are up over 20% since, while the price of that cryptocurrency plunged more than 54%, so it might surprise you that I'm recommending it as a jackpot investment. But there's no doubt that blockchain technology and digital payments hold huge opportunities for the future. Uh, these two technologies are going to touch nearly every sector of the economy, and Bitcoin is by far the leader in crypto. So while I'm not one of those fans that thought Bitcoin was the next best thing in 2017, it does have a solid potential for future growth and it will likely go much higher from the current price. One of my problems with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies has always been that difficulty in finding some kind of fair value. Uh, if you can't find a reason to say something is worth much more or less than the current price, how can you ever invest in it? You know, Bitcoin itself is just bytes of data. It's not backed by any government, so there's no intrinsic value. That, and we've seen that it's not a great store of value either. But there is a way to value Bitcoin. Now, this comes from a mathematical theory called Metcalfe's Law, and it's been eerily good at finding a value for companies like Facebook and other companies that have a network of users at the center of their business model. The idea is that a social network like Facebook or say the network of Bitcoin users creates a value in that trading information. And we see here that the shares of Facebook have been pretty closely following that growth in its monthly user base. So Metcalf's formula for this is the number of users squared and we have an estimate for the number of Bitcoin users that range from 6 million to 13 million. So you would take the square root of each of these estimates to build a lower and an upper band on the fair value. That means between 36 billion or 169 billion market cap on Bitcoin. So the current market cap of Bitcoin at 6,500 is 113 billion. So we could already be around that fair value now, which is why the price hasn't fallen much further for the rest of the year. Of course, the lowest estimate here would still mean a price of about $2,000 for Bitcoin. So there is some potential for some pain. I think you can buy some here, even if that average fair value is around 5,900 for Bitcoin. Buy more only if the price drops to around 3,500 and hold it for that eventual jump higher. There will come a day when everyone has forgotten how crappy Bitcoin was this year and they'll start buying in again. Bitcoin has gone through four of these bubbles so far and there will be another one someday. There's one last point I want to make to these three jackpot investments before we get to those three secrets to getting rich on any strategy. I have each of these in my portfolio, but none are more than 5% of my total wealth. If the investment doesn't pay off, then it doesn't destroy all my money. Uh, each has the potential for 10 or 20 times your investment. So even if that one pays off, then I've doubled my wealth. But that strategy isn't going to make you rich overnight. To get rich in 2019, you're going to have to put more of your money, maybe all of it in that lottery ticket investment. I'm not saying this is the smartest strategy. Personally, I'd rather just stick with doubling my money every few years with that limited downside than risk losing everything. I'm not going to judge what you do, but that's just my opinion. That aside, I want to give you my three secrets to getting rich on any strategy you choose. Now this includes the three we talked about or any wealth building strategy and it doesn't require a jackpot investment. In fact, these three secrets are going to help you build real wealth, not just the get rich quick kind that with the potential to bust you if your numbers don't come out. First is that you have to start with a mental picture, a dream of what rich means to you. What do you want to do and what does life look like when you're rich? This is important because if you don't have that definition of what rich means, I guarantee you will never get there. We are hardwired by evolution to always want more, to never be happy with what we have. So if you don't sit down right now and define that rich life, you'll always be chasing it. This is actually a really interesting psychological idea called adaptive hedonism and you see it in every part of your life. 
You're happy to get that job at first, but it isn't too long before you hate it. You might be the most blissful newlyweds, but after a few years, you've gotten used to each other and it seems like something has changed. Actually defining what it means to be rich for you right now and building that mental image means that you're going to get there and you actually feel rich instead of always feeling like you want more. Now, our next secret to getting rich is going to be to focus on passive income rather than those active income streams where you're always trading your time for money. Don't get me wrong. I love building my business, but there's a limit to my time. If all I had was that one income stream, I'd always be limited to what I could make because I'm always limited by that time. Create multiple streams of income, some that take active work while others can bring in passive income no matter how much time you put in. We've got quite a few videos on the channel about creating passive income, so I'll put a card up here in the corner so check those out. Finally is that you need to spend your money on assets rather than liabilities. Now this is the biggest difference you see between rich people and those without that seven figure portfolio. Assets are things that create wealth or that price increase over time. So think things like stock, real estate, fine art, or even a car if you're using it to create wealth in a job. Liabilities then are going to be things that you buy that destroy wealth or that lose value. So that gigantic 70 inch TV or all the other little things that we buy that we don't really need. Even spending on things that last all of an hour like an eating out. There's a fine line here too. Like you don't need a $30,000 car to get to work. Again, I wouldn't suggest you put all your money into these jackpot investments to get rich quick. I'd rather you put maybe 5% of your total wealth in each along with a smart portfolio of stocks, bonds, and real estate. Each of these lottery tickets can make you wealthy, but there's a lot of risk involved as well. Learn how to play each of them before committing too much money and start creating that financial future. We're here Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with the best videos on beating debt, making more money, and making your money work for you. If you've got a question about money, just scroll down and ask it in the comments and we'll answer it in a future video.